Welcome to this episode for Maker.io and today we're going to be looking at which Pi you should choose. Now if you haven't noticed, I've got a Raspberry Pi 3. Now this is pretty good for me because I've just started out with them. But if you have already got experience with the Raspberry Pi or you're planning to do a very specific project, the Raspberry Pi 3 may not be the choice for you. And as it turns out, there are many Raspberry Pis available. Now, interestingly, the Raspberry Pi itself is not a computer, but a family of computers, including the Raspberry Pi A, B, the 3, uh, the 0, the Compute, I think that's about it so far. But there are many different types of Raspberry Pi. So it's absolutely critical that you get the right one in the project that you need it for. So the first thing that you're going to need to do when you do a new project is actually list out your requirements. Now, the typical kind of requirements you can expect in any electronics project usually come down to cost, size, um, weight, uh, I.O., memory, and speed. Now, speed is a very important thing in a project because if you're expecting to do a lot of work, then you're going to need a lot of speed. But speed isn't just everything. The number of cores can also be very important because even though four cores at a lower speed may seem like a slower system, it can actually do four tasks simultaneously whereas possibly a single core system cannot. But do not be fooled. Just because a four core system has four cores doesn't mean it's four times as fast as a single core system. It just means it can do four different tasks at the same time. So for example, if you're running an operating system like Raspberry and Pi, you're gonna probably want more cores than you are to have speed on a core. So even though a single core processor may be really fast, a four core processor could do more things. For example, your operating system could run on one core, your email program could run on another core, a web browser could run on the third core, and then your user program, which you maybe wrote in Python, could run on the last core. Another factor that tends to be important in projects is the amount of memory that is available to your system. So lower end devices will tend to have lower RAM. So for example, some of the first versions of the Raspberry Pi, I think had 256 megabytes of RAM and then they increased it to 512 because 256 just wasn't cutting it. But the newer modules that have come out actually have a gigabyte. However, that gigabyte is shared with the GPU. So you may want to consider that because just because it has one gigabyte of RAM doesn't mean that's one gigabyte you can play with. It just means it's got one gigabyte of RAM, but some of that RAM is being shared with the GPU. And why would you need memory? Well, some systems may need more memory because they're just handling more data or the programs that they expect to be running will be much bigger. And more memory also means that if you're running something like an operating system and you have lots of spare RAM, it means the operating system itself will not interfere with the programs that you're running. Another option that you may need to consider when building a project is size and weight. While the most of the, well, while most of the Raspberry Pi computers are very small anyway, there still may be some tight uh, size constraints. For example, one of those uh, satellite CubeSat things, uh, the things that go into space, the CubeSat. Basically, the CubeSat uh, are tiny little satellites, I think by 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters, and space is a virtue. You'd want to keep the weight down, you want to keep the amount of stuff you're putting in down, and you want, therefore, the things that go in there need to be small. So, if you're looking at the different Raspberry Pi computers, that's where the Zero may come in handy, because the Zero is incredibly small and is incredibly lightweight, yet it gives you a full-fledged computer, including all the I.O. you could possibly imagine. Of course, the standard Raspberry Pi 3 computers are very tiny anyway, so I'll be, I would be surprised to see a project that was that constraint on space. I mean, look at the package for the Raspberry Pi 3, and that's actually including like uh, a few other things in there as well. So, you know, the, Raspberry, the entire Raspberry Pi 3 computer could fit in that small box. And that was surprising to me when I first bought the Pi. The next thing you'll need to consider is something like I.O. If you're, if you're in a situation where you want to be doing writing documents or sending emails or browsing the internet, chances are a laptop will pretty much suit your needs. But if you're looking at I.O. in terms of circuits and external things, then I.O. can be quite important. And that's when something like the Raspberry Pi 3 or the compute modules really come in. So while most Raspberry Pi computers have 17 I.O. pins, or at least 17 GPIO pins, the Compute 3 modules actually have up to 46, which makes them very ideal in industrial applications because you could be controlling many things at once. You could be detecting many lines, you could be sending lots of signals out to different circuits, you could be bit banging different uh, sort of protocols down lots of things, but you basically have lots of I.O. to play with. So if price is an object in your project, then you may want to consider something like the Raspberry Pi Zero because they can be purchased for as low as $5. However, those are the lower ends. If, you are starting to, if you're starting to look at things like Wi-Fi connectivity, then you are going to be looking at a higher price. 
Um, but e even then, the most expensive ra Raspberry Pi computers come for about $35 individually. However, in the UK, they do seem to be a bit more. Um, and I have seen compute modules go for as much as £40. However, when they're purchased in packs of 100 for industrial applications, they can go for as low as $30. And the other factor that tends to go unnoticed with Raspberry Pi computers is external needed hardware. Now, they do boast, oh, this computer can be purchased for $35. Technically true, but to get it to work, you have to spend a lot more because you're going to need power supplies, you're going to need a keyboard, a display, a mouse, and SD cards, etc., etc. So you can end up looking at $80 just to get this thing to work. And that is not as bad as the compute module, which actually requires uh, external sockets to hold the um, computer because they come in a DDR package. So you won't be able to take a compute module out of its box and then just basically start using it. You have to get a custom PCB or buy one of the development kits and actually slot it into the system, which means that any system that's going to use the compute module will already be looking at a big price tag on the holder itself. So if price is important, you should look at the Model A or the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero because they are very good value and they are essentially complete computers where as long as you can connect your external devices like, like your keyboard and display, they should work straight out of the bag. Of course, when it comes to cost, the more you spend, the more you're gonna get out of it. So personally, I went for the higher price tag and I went for a Raspberry Pi Model 3 for two reasons. Firstly, it's very, very powerful as compared to the Raspberry Pi Model A and B, it comes with Wi-Fi, which means I can connect it to my uh, router without needing cables like an Ethernet or uh, any other fiddly things, or actually having an internet connection in the first place because the, the Raspberry Pi Model A doesn't have internet capabilities. So remember, if your project's looking at speed, then you're going to want to go for a Raspberry Pi 3 or a Compute 3 module. If you're looking for cost, then you may want to look at the Zero. If you're looking for size, again, the zero comes in or the compute module, but remember the compute module requires external hardware to work. And if you're looking for IO capabilities, then the compute module really is out there. So thank you for watching this episode of Maker IO and see you next time.